the energy, you know what I'm saying? But the energy isn't to come and start, you know, being ultra violent and just being violent and hurting each other. That's not, that's not what it's about. Travis Scott. Travis Scott. The clock ticked down to Travis Scott's one point Step up. Coming down, I'll be coming down. Dystopia. Now, an imagined state or society in which there is great suffering or injustice, typically one that's totalitarian or post apocalyptic. But here's the thing it wasn't imaginary, it's actually how that night played out. Oh! 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 The irony of it all is the night before, there was a two song EP that was released. It had Mafia and Escape Plan on there. But on the album cover, the EP cover, it says the true dystopia is here. Now as Travis fans, we knew that an album was coming out a week before this came out. But we didn't really know what it meant and then it actually came out, you see what the cover is. Then the night after, 10 people are dead. So just the irony of it all is crazy. I know, I know everyone went on their spiritual thing and all the conspiracies and all that. But to me, that's really the craziest part. And really, what really went wrong that night is it starts with the barricades. Experts told The Post that a surge toward the main stage would have compressed people into this area that had rigid metal barriers on three sides. It's the barricades set up, the understaffed and then the untraining of the CPR and how they weren't professionally trained. So when we start with the barricades, there were two stages. There was the second stage that was near the left side of the main stage, and then there was the main stage. And then there was this middle stage that was for VIP people that paid extra, and they had their own stage for some random reason, and it was in the middle of everything, making everything more cramped. People at this Travis Festival, they were there, you know, two to three hours early for Travis. <laughs> So Travis started around 9, the second stage wrapped up at 8.30, but most people were off the second stage. But these barricades, there's one way into the left side, one way out of the left side. So all those leftover people from the second stage all migrated to the left side because the second stage is closest to the left side. So it just made everything more cramped and then the crowd surge began. Yeah, crowd surge is a science. I learned that by watching this thing the Washington Post made. It's just crowd density. Everything compacted when those people from the left side, from the second stage, went over to the left side. So that's when the disaster started. And then the last person that actually passed away, I think the 10th person, was actually the person that was dropped on a stretcher by someone in CPR. If I were the family, obviously the 10 billion in lawsuits, they've probably already done it, but I would immediately sue. That's just unacceptable on every level and I get you know people crack under pressure I get all that but something like that dropping someone at a concert on a CPR table is just unacceptable on every level yeah how normal is that to see ambulances and everything else at these festivals well it was a, it was lights so you know and, and ambulances don't really have like red and blue lights but anyway, Travis's response, you know, he did an interview with Charlemagne the God. I'm not gonna come on here and be a biased Travis fan, which, you know, I've been on Travis's side for most of this, but I'm not gonna come on here and be the biggest Travis fan in the world and say that, that interview was good. And he did a horrible job with that interview. I'm not even gonna lie to you. He should have waited to speak. And there's just parts of that interview. He's just not a good interviewer. I think that's what it comes down to. 
Now, people want to say that this didn't emotionally affect him at all. His responses are cliche, and that means that he doesn't care. Obviously, tell of the expression on his face that he's unsure of what to say that this affected him in some way, and it has, but he just doesn't know what really to say in the right way. I think it's just him being a shitty interviewer. That's what it really comes down to. The response hasn't been great, hasn't been perfect, but at the end of the day, he does care, and for me, he's meant a lot to me. He's got me through a lot of tough times, a lot of long nights in the car, driving by myself at night, just bumping Travis. I will never turn against him, but at the same time, I have to look at the facts. I have to look at how he's assessing the situation, and the interview, he should have waited to speak especially with his interviewing skills. I know he wants to vent somehow, but there's a way to do it, and there's other ways to do it. Going on an interview this early, I don't think was the way to do it. He's great on the stage. <laughs> He's got to be formal. It's not when he's great, but you can tell on the emotion on his face that you know this really did affect him in a way. So I will say that much, and I can't wait to show you guys part two of this. Part two, I already have people slated for an interview on part two. Interviews are going to be crazy on there. Everyone that's pretty notable is going to be on there. So I cannot wait to bring that to you guys. It was a traumatic experience. You know, for me, it wasn't that bad. But for a lot of the people that I knew and that I was at a Travis event with before, it was really bad for them. So keep them in your prayers and rest in peace to the 10 victims.